Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, hello, everybody. I don't know. I don't even know if it's on right at this point. I'm going to be honest. Um, getting my life together. I think it is, though, bro. I think it is. Um, if you can see and hopefully hear me, please throw a yes in the comments. And uh, I know I won't just be talking to myself. Let me see if I can tell this way. Throw a yes in Maybe, maybe, no comments yet. I mean, it says 15 viewers. Can y'all hear me? Throw up a like or, or throw a comment for me in the comments. Say, okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Yes, 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 yes. All right, hello, everybody. Um, it says I, <laughs> Alvin, or Coach Alvin, or Tumble Doctor, just decided to hop on live. I just got off the of live with the Facebook supporters group. So I was like, let me hop on here too. Let me see what's happening. If I can help somebody, then my living is not in vain. So if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, um, DMs or retweets that need to be discussed, I might, might, might be able to help. <laughs> so just let me know. Um, if not, then I guess I'll just preach to y'all on this Sunday night. Uh, let's see, let's see, okay. I, I've got a new setup, so I'm really hoping that the audio is, is clear, um, the camera looks good. So forgive me if you see me looking over here at my computer screen, because I'm just trying to figure all this out. All right, um, I don't see any direct questions right now, so I just want to, oh, I can see it like that. Oh, that's fire. All right, cool. Sorry, I'm back. All right. So I just want to discuss something. I just want to just go over something real quick. I don't know for any of you parents out there, for any of you just straight up adults out there, I don't know how many of you have ever been driving and been in an accident, whether it was your fault or not, but I'm assuming most of us have driven and been driving a car and got into an accident. If not, blessings on blessings. I hope you keep that record forever. For those of you who were driving a vehicle, and you got into an accident. What was it like the next time you went to go drive? Like if it was the same car, right? Like they fixed the car and you get back in that car. What was that experience like that next time? Maybe the next two times, maybe the next five times. Was there any anxiety associated with that? Did you feel any fear? Was there any recollections of, man, I could have died in this same vehicle? I was driving, um, I think it was like a Sunday. I'm not sure the exact day. Um, it was in the morning, and I'm driving t to the gym. I have some private lessons to do, and I was, th man, I was thinking about 10,000 different things. I already knew what I was doing with the athletes who were coming because I already knew who, what, who they were, studied them and research. I was ready for that. But I think I was, if it was a Sunday, I was, I was working on Wednesday mentally. In my mind, right? Yeah, I'm already on Wednesday. Um, and then all of a sudden, I'm passing a truck, doing a turn. I'm on a highway, three-lane highway. Slight turn, passing a truck, going probably 72, 73 miles an hour. And I hear a boom, loud explosion. I think in my head, that truck just, just blew its tire. That's exactly how the thought went through my head. That truck just blew its tire. As soon as I finished thinking that, my car started going, and then I started to hear a noise coming out of my car, hearing and feeling a noise coming out of my car that I had never heard or felt before. So then I said, oh, that's my car. So again, I was in a three-lane highway. I had passed the truck. The other two lanes are open. As long as I can maintain my speed, I can get over to the far right, to the safety of the side. I start to move my car from the third lane to the middle lane, I barely get there. My car goes, fishtails a little bit, and I pop a wheelie on the highway, probably at 70 miles an hour. So immediately I say, nope, I ain't going nowhere. Front of my car comes down, I straighten it out, I pull off on the left side. The left side is the median, is the middle side. So I sit there, I'm shaking, I'm terrified. I'm absolutely positively terrified. I'm I could have died. Like, 
I could have gone. If it had blown a little earlier and I lost control right next to that truck, I would have gone underneath the truck. So all the problems that I was dealing with in my head up until Wednesday, a couple minutes before, a couple seconds before, oh, you know, they all disappeared. They were all gone. Now it was like life. That's the only thing that mattered, right? Um, long story short, they okay. I'm good. Who cares about cars, right? If the car would have been totaled, who cares? Because I'm fine. Blessing that my car was fine. They actually had the tire on the very next day. And I was thinking it was going to take some time for whatever reason. I didn't know if I ruined my rim. I thought it was going to take a couple, some time. That very next day at 8 o'clock in the morning, the, uh, the mechanic calls me and says, hey, come pick up your car. It's ready. A car was ready, but I wasn't. I thought I had a couple of days to not have to worry about driving my car. Woo! I was terrified to drive my car again. Got four brand new tires. I'm good to go. I'm sound. But I was terrified to drive my car again. I use this example because there's a lot of athletes who have had accidents. And the accidents don't have to be physical accidents. Some athletes have fallen, for sure. They've done what I call the death drop. When you rebound up in the air and then like land on your head and neck and your back like bow, they've done that and now they're absolutely terrified. Other athletes haven't had physical accidents, but mentally, they've had mental crashes, right? So for us and for my situation in particular as far as driving my car, I don't think there's an athlete on this earth that would have accepted or will accept the fact that Coach Alvin is scared to drive his car, so he's not going to ever be able to work with you again. For those of you who know me that have either you work with me or your athlete works with me, like that's not going to fly, bro. You're going to get your butt in this car, and you're going you to drive this car, right? That's how, probably how a lot of people feel. But the one thing that I, I learned from this situation, one, fear is real. And, and being in a position where you're like, I might die, and that is the feeling. Whether it's your tire blew out and you're popping a wheelie on the, on the highway in a real-world drive <laughs> sports car, um, or it's you're standing there to do a tumbling pass. And, yeah, you could have done this tumbling pass a million times. I've driven my car and cars a million, million times. I spend a lot of time behind the wheel of a car, right? But that doesn't really matter when you have an actual fear for your life. I don't know if you parents realize how tumbling, how scary tumbling is, but I'll tell you straight up, it's terrifying. You don't believe me? The next time you drop your off ath athlete off at practice, don't drop them off. Go in with them and get on the floor with them. Whatever they're attempting, you attempt. Oh, you don't want to do that. Why? Because you don't want to break your neck, right? You enjoy walking around and being able to look left, right, up, and down, right? You ain't trying to pull your back and have your back out, right? It's scary. It's terrifying. So just knowing that something is scary, it's terrifying. Knowing that a lot of these athletes literally have a fear for their life, just like we have a fear for our life after we've been in an accident and we got to drive again, knowing that, how come we're not compassionate with our athletes as they're dealing with fears? For you cheer parents out there, are you your athlete's biggest cheerleader? Like, I know you're the primary investor. I get that. 100%. Shout out to you for all the time, money, energy, and effort you put into your athlete. But are you their biggest cheerleader? When they've had a hard day, are you like, well, why didn't you throw it? Well, why didn't you hit your stunt? Or are you like, I'm proud of you? How often do you tell your athlete that you're proud of them? Does your athlete think that, that they disappoint you when they don't throw their tumbling skill? Y'all see where I'm going? These are, these are conversations that need to be had because from my experience, training athletes, and I've got a course, it's called Mindful. We're actually starting up soon. So if you're interested, tumbledocsignups at gmail.com. This course is for athletes who are learning to deal with their fears. Um, what, what, what do you do? No, here's the question. Because I asked it in the supporters group. 
Do you pour into your athlete when they've had a hard day? Or do they get in the car with you and do they feel like they're getting drained by you? These are all questions that I want you to ask. Because I've said it before, I say it again. In cheerleading, in gymnastics, the trophies that they get outside of the Olympics, the trophies that they get if they were to take them to the pawn shop, like, and they sold them, you wouldn't even be able to buy their uniform with the money that, a, a one year's uniform. For your cheer parents, you couldn't buy a pair of shoes. You probably couldn't even get a pair of socks at the Goodwill. You probably couldn't even sell it at the pawn shop. They probably would laugh at you. That's not the goal. The goal is for athletes to believe in themselves. The goal is to, for athletes to learn how to struggle. The goal is for families to learn how to struggle together and encourage each other when things are hard. The goal is for athletes to grow in confidence in such a way that when they retire from their two minute and 30 second cheer routine or from their gymnastics routine and they move forth into the world and they're going to job interviews, they don't feel the fear that a lot of people who haven't performed in front of thousands of people will feel when they go to those job interviews. When it's time to do something scary in their adult life, they're like, <laughs> oh man, I am scared, but it ain't like my back tuck. It's not like my back handspring. So that's really the goal. So I challenge all of you, you parents, um, when it comes to your athletes, and this is cheer, gymnastics, or just if your baby don't flip, this is just in general. I got two challenges for you. One, let's call it the I'm proud of you challenge. Then for the next 30 days, every time your athlete comes around you, tell, you that, tell them that you're proud of them. Like they walk in the room, I'm proud of you. They get in the car with you after school, I'm proud of you. That's the challenge. I'm proud of you challenge. Every time you... If y'all are in the room, you don't just have to be like, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you, I'm proud of you. But if they leave the room, they come in, I'm proud of you. I want you, over the next 30 days, this is, you know what's wild? Woo! Ooh, I'm going there. You know what's wild? If you took this challenge and only did this challenge for, let's say, seven days, just every time you saw your athlete, you said, I'm proud of you. Not for everybody. But I would bet for the majority of you, in that seven-day time span, your athlete would hear, I'm proud of you more times in those seven days than they have in their entire life. I bet. So yeah, let's do it. The 30 day I'm proud of you challenge. And you know what parents? I'm proud of you. <laughs> Cause you're obviously here to get help and to do anything and everything that you can for your athletes. So you, I know you, ooh, I know you haven't heard it for a long time. Look me in my eye. I am proud of you mama. I am proud of you daddy. I'm proud of you, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, loved one. I'm proud of you. For real. All right, now I'm going to hop off. hop off my soapbox. Let me see if I have any questions. And uh, that'll be about it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Best advice for executing a back tuck. The best advice I can give you for executing a back tuck is to get your core muscles stronger and get your leg muscles stronger. So... I haven't really said this to parents before, but I'm going to say it today. You should know your child's vertical jump. Huh? Got to hear me? You should know your child's vertical jump. How high can your child jump off the ground? If you're worried about your child jumping off the ground and doing a backflip, prior to even the backflip, shouldn't you be like, I wonder how high they can jump. Does my baby have a six-inch vertical? Does she have a 60-inch vertical? Does he have a 60-inch vertical? Find out their vertical. And then instead of going, and this is wild because this is my livelihood, but instead of going somewhere and paying somebody to work on your child's back, let's be reasonable, right? If you pay somebody to do an hour lesson with your baby once a week for a month, that's four lessons, let's say four lessons, right? For a lot of people, they don't see progress in four sessions. For a lot of people. Not with me though, it's different. It's different, it's different on this side. North Beast, yeah, we do it different on this side. But for a lot of people, there's no progress in four sessions or slight progress. What if for four weeks, week one, my baby can jump six inches off the ground. Week two, my baby can jump six and a quarter inches off the ground. Week three, <gasps> my baby don't gain an inch on her vertical. 
or his vertical. Week four, my baby's up one and a half inches on her. Do, you see where I'm going? So I, I would focus in on just the ability for them to jump higher because guess what? They can do those exercises at home for bare minimum, if not free. Definitely no, you don't have to pay no gas money for them to, to, to drive them somewhere uh, to, to, to work on the skills. So I would definitely say the vertical. And, I mean, if y'all are interested, I'll be happy to do a jump program. I will definitely create a jump program. Put in the comments. If you want a jump program, let me know. I got the camera. I got the microphone. We out here. So if I need to do a jump program, I'll do a four-week jump program. Why not? I'm down. Just let me know. Um, and then, yeah, again, core. Core strength, core strength, core strength. All right, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Somebody said, hey, King. Hey, hi. How you doing? How you doing? Appreciate that. Appreciate that. What advice would you give someone who hasn't tumbled in a while? Feels like a restart. Um, how come when we got to start over, why is that shameful? I feel like the hardest part is to, whoo, bars. The hardest part is to start. No matter where you started from, the hardest part is just to get started. So if that's the hardest part, let's celebrate when we start from the beginning. Whew. Isn't a blessing to start from the beginning? Like that means you got some time. Hey, tumble doctors definitely started from the beginning. Started from the absolute bottom. Don't feel bad that you're restarting. Feel blessed that you have the opportunity to try it again. That's the mindset. That's the advice. Let me see. Let me see. My 15-year-old is a level three junior athlete, but still will not throw her back tumbling without a spot. I've tried for years to get her coaching slash privates. Do you have any recommendations, suggestions, recommendations? First, uh, karma. I don't know what try means. What is your definition of try? If you told your 15-year-old to go clean their room because it's a hot, dirty mess, and they turned to you and said, I'll try. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and, and just approach the mindset, because that's really what it is. It's the mindset. No more try, no more can't. Those words are banned from your vocabulary and your athlete's vocabulary. You either going to do or, you're, or you do not. If you don't have the ability to do something then and you're working on it, then it's not that you can't do it. It's processing. It's uploading. It's a work in progress. There's no, no can't. No try. Sorry, I just saw that word and I just kind of went off. Okay. Um, honestly, and this is a shameless plug. Honestly, what I would say to do is join Tumble Doctor Supporters, four ninety nine a month, right here on Facebook. Um, in Tumble Doctor Supporters, people can post videos. I review those videos and then I post them. I do lives for the supporters. Um, any way I can help, people just go in there and vent. That's where I would say go first and then post a video in there. And then I can look at what your athlete is doing. But I bet your athlete tumbles with her eyes closed. I bet. I bet it. Because about 80%, 90% of cheerleaders tumble with their eyes closed. Um, absolutely her biggest cheerleader, but I'm guilty of sometimes pushing her too much. I love it. I love it. And this is something else. This is something else. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm parents coming at you. I'm real. I'm talking to the adults right now. Be just being real. What 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 have you done in your life that was scary? Scary, equally scary to doing a backflip. I don't know if it was start a business or leave one job to go to another job and it required a move and sacrifices and pain and tears and frustration. What have you done in the last five years that your athlete got a front row seat to witness? Because if your athlete has not witnessed you conquer a fear and you're looking at them like, why aren't you throwing this layout? Why aren't you throwing this back handspring? I know you can do it. What if your baby turned to you and said, well, why are you still working at that job? Why are you still comfortable? How come you haven't started that business? How come you haven't gone back to school? Woo! Now, some of y'all parents might hit your child for saying something like that. But isn't it realness? You really want to inspire a kid? 
do something scary in front of them or talk about a scary experience that was relevant, that, that that's visceral, that they can reach out, they can see a picture or a video of. It's, it's, it's time that we start inspiring these athletes instead of telling them, oh, I know you can do it. Bro, they know they can do it too, and they don't understand why they're not doing it. They don't understand fear. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Why do I have, sorry, geography teachers, Mr. Sherman, you're the man. I love you. The geography, my ninth grade geography class was one of my favorite classes that I ever took. But why in the world am I in ninth grade getting tested on capitals and looking at maps and, and, and things of this nature? I've traveled the world and I've never been in a situation where I needed to know the capital of a state or this province or this or that or even how a monarchy is, is, is structured. Like there's so many things that are taught and I understand it's just to, to educate the mind and get the mind working and to build, build neural pathways. But why are there no courses on how to deal with fear? We don't talk to kids about how, to, we say push through. Oh, why are you scared? And then when it comes to our fears, what do we do? Hmm. Hmm. I ain't addressing it. I ain't addressing it because I'm not going to go anywhere near something that makes me afraid. Why aren't we teaching our babies this in, in, in elementary school? How to deal with fear. Here's the definition of anxiety. Why are they not learning about this in middle school as, as puberty starts hitting full rage? Why don't high schoolers... Why would, I'm going to be real, and I went to great schools, and I honestly, all praise God, I paid for my niece and my nephew to go to some great schools for high school. But I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of high schoolers out here that cannot even spell anxiety, much less define it. Why aren't we teaching them about that? Because we don't even know too much about it because our generation wasn't taught about it, and a lot of our parents had PTSD because their parents had, because they were Vietnam and their parents had PTSD because of the world wars. So we just go and just ignore it, right? And then how many of us grew up calling other people scaredy cat or, or we got called scaredy cat? How many of us grew up feeling ashamed for feeling afraid of doing something? And passed it right on to the next generation. It's sad. But that's why I, another reason why I do that mindful course. Shameless plug, I could care less. These athletes need to know what anxiety means. These athletes need to have an adult in their life who is doing scary things on a regular basis. To be honest, I'm, this is scary to me. Once I'm talking, once I'm in my zone, I'm scared. Or I'm not scared, but that's why I don't go live more, because I'd be scared. Yep. People are mean on the internet. They're going to talk about me and, da -da 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 -da, and all the other excuses. But the cool thing about life and what I've learned is that my goals could care less about my fears. If I want them, I got to go get them. All right, sorry, I'm still preaching. Let me see anything else. Um, could I tell me if I'm 17 years old, 168 pounds, and no experience? <laughs> Boy, young people. Young people are hilarious to me. 17, you say 17 like you old. I'm a couple years older than 17, and I'm not even old yet. At 17 years old, you can do anything. You're at an age where you can do anything. If you made a decision that you wanted to go to the moon, you go to the moon. So, here's your answer. You can do. You can have anything that you want. It's, it's going to be painful. It's going to be frustrating. It's, it's, you're going to feel like you're stagnant at times. But if you really want it, the, quote, the best quote, one of the best motivational quotes that I've ever heard. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you that's when you'll be successful. My daughter's in her second year of sideline cheer and she wants to tumble but finds it hard. Yeah, of course. Tumbling is difficult, for sure. That's what makes it great. If flipping wasn't difficult, if flipping was easy, all of you would be flipping around right now. That wouldn't be cool to me. That was a part of my identity growing up. I was the only kid that could flip at my school. Couldn't know. There were other people that could flip, kind of, but I... Hey, I was out here. I was a teacher's nightmare in the hallways and on the playground. They swear I was going to injure myself as I'm throwing fools and double fools. What? A what? <laughs> but that's what makes it special. Same thing that makes it difficult makes it special. Same thing with life, right? 
Uh, let's see. Marcus Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, for anybody that loves or even just likes Tumble Doctor, there's somebody that's, I don't know if he's still on, but I used to watch this dude flip. He used to fly him. There's another guy named John Greenwich. Marcus Johnson and John Greenwich were two African-American uh, male tumblers uh, in a world where there were not them, those two, and Chaney Humphrey. But those three people that I looked up to, they're the only people that look like me that tumble. Other people at school, just regardless of their, of their skin color, uh, uh, religion, or anything like that, they just used to tell me, oh, oh, why do you tumble? Men don't tumble. That's for girls. That's what I used to hear all the time. And Marcus Johnson, who just said he proud of me, means the absolute world. I'm over here beaming right now. Uh, I looked up to him. So appreciate you, big bro. Thank you for setting a phenomenal example. Straight up. Cynthia, how can I get her to get a back walkover for the first time? Does she have a back bend? Does she have a bridge kickover? Can she push up into a bridge and walk around the house? That's the first question. How? Rewind everything back. How long can she push up into a bridge and hold for? How many steps can she take into a bridge walk? In her bridge walk. Can she walk around? Can she kick over? Can she back bend? Those are four questions that I have for her. Fifth question is for you. Do you have a back bend? Do you have a bridge? You ask how. All right, baby, you get your back walk over. I'm going to get my, my, my bridge. I'm going to get my back bend. You, you want somebody to do something? You, we know this. We all know this. What's the best way to lead? Here, let me go first. So if you want them to get something, then you get something. Be the inspiration. Oh, my mama. No, nah, bro, I'm not just going to let my mama be doing bridges and I don't get my back walk over. That will inspire your athlete. And I want to be clear because I learned this a couple years ago. There's a difference between motivation and inspiration. We use the words interchangeably, but they're two completely different things. Motivation is me. Um, uh, motivation is me is telling you about the I'm proud of you 30 day challenge. That's motivation. Inspiration is you on the 16th day still saying I'm proud of you. Motivation is external. Inspiration is internal. So you want to, you don't want to just motivate your athlete. You want to inspire your athlete. You want to inspire an athlete learning how to do a back walkover. If you don't have a bridge, get a bridge. Uh... Probably, okay, I, I just got lost. She's probably the best analogy I've heard for tumbling. Really just made a light bulb go off. Jason, sorry, guys, I just hit the microphone. Sorry for any rebirth. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. I'm just talking, you know what I'm saying? I'm just living my passion. Uh, yes, please, jump program. Okay, got you. In regard to vertical jumps, would that be the same as box, jump, box jumps? Great question. When I say vertical jump, I mean testing their vertical. So if you don't know how to do that, this is what you do. Woo! I almost slipped and fell. I hope y'all would have la laughed at me if I would have just died in a live. That would have been hilarious. So I'll get down. It's because of the way the camera's angle. So let's say you have your athlete ah, um, against the wall. Let me go back. Let me go back. You take a tape measure. Put it from wherever. Wherever you want to start it. Here. Go up as high as you can. They also have vertical jump testers on Amazon. I think they got cheap ones. Here's the here a cheaper way that you can do it too. Take a um, uh, tape measure. Measure. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like the things that the some people that so be using. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Put that up against the wall, right? And then have the athlete. Let's just pretend that I'm standing. Have them put their arm up. You mark wherever their hand is. So let's say that they're at, I don't know, 20 inches. Then the athlete can take one step, D come together, so it's step, and they jump up as high as they can, and they tap on the tape measure. You watch where they tap at. That's how, so let's say they were at 20, they jump up, they touch 30, your athlete has a 10 inch vertical. So now it's like, all right, bro, cool. And I'm gonna be real, I don't have no kids, but if I had a kid and they were in cheerleading, I would spend a whole year, I would spend a good, yeah, so it would be a whole cheer season, I would just spend one just 
all right. If you are don't already naturally have like a very high vertical, I'm gonna spend a year and we just gonna get we gonna get six to eight inches on your vertical over this year. Cause then everything, the whole game. Cha- if your child could jump six to in- eight inches higher, are they having a lot of the problems that they're having right now with their tumbling? <laughs> if you could jump six to eight inches higher, you probably feel like you could do a flip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's that's the that's the vertical jump. Any advice for getting a quicker snap down and a standing back handspring so she can land it and stand up other than handstand snap down drills? This is where man, I'd be I'd be feeling so so bad for these. Cheerleaders, I said this in the supporters group. I'll say this again real quick. Um, here's the peril with cheerleading. In cheerleading, on a level two team, you do a standing back handspring. When you land in a, in a competition situation, you are supposed to stick and stand. My chest is down, and then I stand up with a big old smile on my face. That's how it's taught. Level two, if you do a round off back handspring in the routine, you're not supposed to pull your chest up and rebound. If somebody rebounded, did a round of hands from rebound in a routine, just knowing the judges that I know, they would probably laugh. Like, this program has no idea what they're teaching these children because you're not supposed to do that. On a level three team, you're taught for multiple back handsprings, two or three, stick and stand. How do you do a back handspring and land with your chest down? Um, for me personally, what I would do to land a back handspring, my chest forward a little bit, I would make sure that I, as I snapped my legs down, I didn't snap my chest up, which would take away from the snap down because I'm breaking my shape in half, kind of. So in essence, I would slow down my snap down and I wouldn't snap up to land with my chest down. Does, y'all get the confusion, right? So then we start telling athletes, hey, don't land with your chest down. That's bad. Get your chest up so you can do another back handspring. Athletes are, man, you talk about muscle confusion and just regular confusion. It's like one day they want me to land my chest down. I'll give you, I'll just say it this way. If you take standing three back handsprings, a skill or a pass that a lot of level three teams do, three back handsprings in a row. If you take the proper speed, the speed, not proper, the speed that you're supposed to do it at in a level three routine, and then tell somebody to do three back handsprings at that speed and double full out of it? I believe Simone Biles is the best tumbler in the world. I do not believe that Simone Biles could do a double full out of three back handsprings at level three speed. I don't know. I'm not doubting her. I'm not saying that she couldn't. I, again, I believe Simone Biles is the best tumbler in the world, but I don't think that she could double full out of level three, three back, level three speed, three back handsprings. Maybe, maybe, but it would only be her. Ain't nobody else doing that. <laughs> got it? Or maybe those people that got standing doubles, but the form would be off. It'd be terrible. Then the athletes move to level four, and it's like, hey, do it with two to tuck. Do y'all realize it's a different technique and a different speed? for two back handsprings on a level three team and two back handsprings on a level four team? Do y'all realize that if your baby did three back handsprings in a row, how they're supposed to do it on a level three team, if they did that and attempted a double full out of that, that they would harm themselves? I don't know if people realize that. So that's where the confusion comes in for a lot of athletes. But outside of that, to get a stronger, not just snap down, but snap up, you um you said that you've been working on this probably been working on this for a while what is she doing for her core how 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 often do you see your athlete best question hold on give me a second got it how often does your athlete condition her core for free meaning How many times do you come upon your child and you see them working out at home? You didn't have to spend no gas. You didn't have to spend no time. You didn't spend no money. You didn't go nowhere. You just hear them grunting as they're working on doing limit squeezes and getting their core stronger. Because really it comes down to a strong core. If you have a strong core, you can get away with almost anything when it comes to tumbling. Real talk. So that's what I would focus on. The drill isn't a drill. The drill is an exercise. The drill is get stronger. Make your core stronger. 
Okay. My eight-year-old daughter is in her second year of cheer and has difficulty doing a back walkover. Any suggestions? Um, doo -doo -doo, let me see. So I said this earlier, and again, this is kind of like a shameless plug, but it's not. For anybody that has like athletes who are going through issues and um, you have like videos and you're confused and you want to know and you want to be able to show your athlete, like maybe you have your athlete on a live and I'm reviewing your, their video, I do have a supporters group right here on Facebook. It's called Tumble Doctor Supporters. It's $4.99 a month. If you don't have, you can cancel any time right here on Facebook. You could just come on there and upload two, three videos, pay that $4.99 get your videos review, and then cancel. And never be a subscriber again or a supporter again. Now, I'm going to do my best to make sure that I give you at least five, at least $6 worth of value every month. At least No, not 6 At least $60 worth of value every single month, um, just in information. But, yeah, if you have a specific question, if you're like, I don't understand what my athlete's doing wrong, come on, come on over. Come on over to the supporters group. Um, in the meantime... Yeah, I mean, it could be, there's, there's just so many things that I would discuss and that I, I would really just want to see the video and then I could just kind of diagnose it. I'm a tumble doctor. It makes sense. Diagnose it. Ooh. Yeah, kind of like that. And you're a coach. I got information for you coaches in there. Come on, coach. Come on now. Come on now. Me going on Mount Everest at Disney. That was an embarrassing sight. LOL. LOL. Me freaking out while my kids are jumping for excitement and laughing at me. So now when you turn around to Lexi and say, Lexi, I, I, I'm proud of you and I understand that you're afraid. Do you remember me on Mount Everest? And you say that to her after a hard day and she's been dealing with fears. The whole conversation, the whole mood, everything changes. Now she's laughing at you again. Yeah, my, you was terrified. Huh. But she did it. And that's how the process works. That's inspiration there. Okay, okay. Yeah, how many limit squeezes can they do is the question, 100%. Uh, you must have a back made of steel the way you catch everybody. You're the best. You can see the kids really love you. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. You know what? Tumble Doctor is brought to you in part by... Foam rolling. <laughs> I don't know who these people are. Oh, it's reversed. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah. Guy, guy um, these, these, these folks, I need to reach out because they should be, they should be, they should definitely be sponsoring this video. That's, the back's not made out of steel. It's made out of foam. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jenna Page Grimes, as a gymnastics coach, landing with your chest down is so crazy. I was working with this team, and um, this is when I first got into it. And I didn't know the girl who owned the program, she ain't really know. We both were just new, right? Like, she was a cheerleader, but we didn't know anything about no varsity or nothing like that. So... It's funny, but I sent a level two team to a, their first competition. They did all of them. They did round-off handspring rebounds. They did standing handspring rebounds, all of that. I had them hollow in the, in the rebound, sticking the landing, all of that. And then the, the owner was like, hey, um, Alvin, I know you know how to teach tumbling, but you don't know how to teach cheer tumbling because I scored she got killed. I was like, what you mean? She was like, yeah, we got killed because <laughs> they're supposed to be stick. And stand. So I 100% agree. Landing with your chest down is an absolute setup. I say it all the time. I am not a huge fan of the structure of level two and level three. For that tumbling for that reason. Jess Lucas, appreciate the love. Truly. Um, any tips for front punches? I would just say just generic general tips without seeing a video. Punching from the balls of your feet. As opposed to a lot of athletes, when they do their front punches, they're punching from their heels. They need to be more so on the front portion of their feet, the balls of their feet. 
because then they can use their calves. If you punch from your heels, you're not using your calves. You're punching more like from your, I mean, I guess you are kind of using your calves, but if I punch from my heels, my shins are going to complain 1,000%. I don't feel any pain in my Achilles, but I'm sure it doesn't really like it. <laughs> um, when I punch from my toes, I don't feel anything in my shins. <laughs> Uh, let me squeeze. I heard it here on the very first slide, and now my six-year-old daughter has been doing it for fun and now can do two to three back handsprings in a row. Thank you. Lots of good info. Thank you. Thank you for coming on here and saying that because it means the world to me. One, it tells me, Alvin, get your book back on live more. I'm back, guys. I'm back. And two, it tells me what I already knew. A strong core helps you with your back handsprings. It helps the snap down. So thank you for, for, for validating me. Truly appreciate it. Um, thank you. I've been out of cheer over 20 years, and I want to give my daughter the same opportunity. Shout out. I salute you for that. I salute you for that. 100%. How old is your oldest student? Well, I was born in the 80s. So I would say that. 80s babies. <laughs> um, I am a coach, but I also pride myself on being a student as well. Um, so, for me, yeah, I would say my, I am my oldest student. Um, or maybe even some of the people, I might even consider uh, some of the parents, even though they pay me, students as well. I guess students do pay, right? College, think about stuff like that. High school, private schools, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I would say the parents. How old is the oldest person um, that flips with me. I was working with. You got it. If you don't know, like I don't. I wish there was three of me so I could do more lessons at a time. But there's not very much availability. So at one point um, prior to 2020, I was working with somebody that was in their 50s. And we're working on back handsprings. Back walk. She got a back walk over actually. So, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I said it. 50s. Not 50, 50s. Yeah, I said it. She's working on back handspring and her back walkover. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to, when you want to flip as bad as you want to take your next breath, that's when you'll be able to flip. Hey, appreciate it. Yeah, parents and students too. And they teach me things too, 100%. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I do not see any more questions, um, so I'm going to hop off now. I'm going to be honest. I've been working all weekend, you know what I'm saying? And it's time. <laughs> hey, I don't know if y'all know this noise, but shout out to anybody in the group who knows this noise right here. Let me see if I can catch it on the microphone. I don't know if y'all heard that beep. <laughs> but let's just say that my controller is on. It is PS5 time, guys. It's PS5 time. So appreciate everybody for watching and listening. And yeah, y'all got your challenge. I'm proud of you challenge. 30-day challenge for the next 30 days. Every time you see your child, when they walk in the room, you tell them that you're proud of them. They get in your car, you tell them that you're proud of them. Thank you. Appreciate you. The world needs you. You're amazing. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Let's keep getting it. Y'all know what time it is because it's always that time. Let's see. Peace. And then here's the awkward moment. Like when you finish a live and you're like looking for the end button and it's like, what do I do? Do I just act like I'm not on live anymore? Hide me. Hide me. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> Adios, everybody. Oh. Oh, 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 somebody asked about Mindful. I'm going to put into the chat for more info on the Mindful program. Please send an email to tumbledocsignups at gmail.com. Hashtag, let's eat. Beautiful. Put the information in there. You can send an email. Uh, my assistant uh, has an email that explains everything. If you have any specific questions, she got gotcha. you.
Oh, I didn't put it in. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kristen, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kristen, yeah. PS5 time. <laughs> um, okay, so Mark. Yeah, so just a little bit more information about the Mindful Program. Mindful Program, I'm bringing a bunch of people together who don't understand their fears. They're having trouble. They're having difficulty throwing tumbling passes, throwing different skills. Um, I've even had coaches participate in the program just so that they, they can understand how to train their athletes. And real talk, it's a bunch of people who are scared, learning like one, that it's okay to be scared and that the greatest people who accomplish the greatest things on life did it terrified. Um, two, it's to teach them that they don't have something wrong with their brain. If you know me, you know I do not approve of the terminology mental block because there's nothing wrong with their brain. It is their amygdala. It is uh, uh, it's their amygdala doing what their amygdala is supposed to do. It is the problem is they don't know what anxiety is. There's no strategy to handle anxiety. Nobody talks about we get injured more often mentally than we do physically. Nobody talks about we take better care of our teeth than we do our brains. So we get in deep. It's uh, I think ten. It's either eight or ten. I should know this. It's either, but I'm living my passion, so who cares? It's either eight or ten sessions. Um, the sessions are at least thirty minutes. Sometimes I go over a little bit, um, and they're small sessions of five to six athletes, and they're held over Zoom. So you could be in Michigan, or you could be in Antarctica. As long as you got the internet and you got Zoom, let's see. <laughs> um, all right. That is about it. And um, go Eagles. <laughs> Peace.